Welcome to Live at Five. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Hello, I'm Caroline Faraday. I am your host. I served with the U.S. Army. I was a paratrooper at the 173rd Airborne. Between uh, 2003, 2006, I did an, a tour in Afghanistan, 2005 to 2006, combat medic. Now I serve our nation's veterans at the West LA VA. Very stoked to be here to talk about a topic very close to my heart, being vegan. But what about when you were in the military? Was that much more challenging to stick? Oh, well, that was very challenging, but that was, it was actually <laughs> hardest in basic training because I was in a situation where I had no control over what was put in front of me. If they had any vegan option whatsoever, what we would now consider like the bare minimum of, of vegan options. It, even basic training would have been easy because I, I was running marathons before basic training. So running wasn't, wasn't hard. And I've been working out and doing martial arts long before that. So if my advice is to someone who's vegan going in the military, if someone was thinking, I would say definitely consider it. Look at your options. Look at the, diff look at the branches. Think of a job that you could see yourself doing. I think the military is a great institution. So Thank you for having me. I have about 20 plus years in television broadcasting, big stories here, of course, in LA, wildfires and police pursuits. Once in a while, we have some uh, good news too. I'm happy to say that I'm, I'm cancer free, but it's still, even though it's been 12 years, still a very big part of my life. I've served on the executive board of Cousin G. Coleman. I um, now work closely with the American Cancer Society here in Los Angeles. It, just hosted uh, two weeks ago, a big walk on the Santa Monica Pier. We have about almost 7,000 people out there. And this is just such an incredible community where people really lift up and support each other and have so much gratitude just to be able to feel healthy and be able to do that. And so uh, my interests really are in can uh, cancer research, uh, biomedical, and uh, love hosting and talking to people about this. Dorothy, welcome, Dorothy Hammett. Welcome, Lol. Lovely to see your smiley face with us as well. Thank you for joining us. So I've just recently retired as chief legal officer for a company called Ensign Bitfruit Industries. They are a technology and manufacturing conglomerate, and they also boast that they are actually the the um, oldest family held, privately held company in the United States. And that kind of ties back to my own family history, where my family owned Rolling Rock Brewing Company for many, many years. So I've been around family companies, generational companies, um, and it's been a, a real lifeblood for me and something that I absolutely love to support. So in speaking engagements, I'd really love to talk about um, how to have wonderful shareholder relations, uh, the importance of ethics in a private company, um, things like board governance and succession planning. Hi, Sam. Hi, Caroline. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. My presentations are, are narrative driven and include all the dramatic elements of my stories from starting a tech company in Singapore, to traveling to every country in the world, uh, to being taken hostage in Syria. But it also weaves in and concludes with key principles that I believe anyone can implement into their life. I like that list. That's like, they go from like shopping in Costco, talking to my neighbor, being held hostage in Syria. And you just slung it in there. The third thing in the list, being held hostage in Syria. Tell me more. I was in Syria and the, the regime there took me hostage. They accused me of espionage, of being an American spy, of collaborating with terrorists. And things got uh, pretty uncomfortable. But thank God, thanks to a long list of people who worked tirelessly, uh, the situation ended peacefully and in the wake of that, I've really been taking the time to put things into context and perspective and really try to focus on what does this mean and what can be useful to other people. You're not talking about having been to Syria when it was in the midst of a civil war and you got taken hostage. You're talking about going there when you thought you were going to be safe, right? Well, one of the one of the big challenges is that Syria is one of the most culturally, religiously, historically significant places in the world. And unfortunately, what we've seen over the past 12, now 13 years, heartbreaking. And obviously, we're hearing a lot about and thinking a lot about people who've been taken hostage in difficult situations at the moment. What is that realization, that moment of realization of what is happening to you? 
I was scared, confused. I had no information or anyone to help. I was desperately trying to understand what was happening. Frankly, I was shocked and in disbelief about what had happened in just a few short hours. But what's interesting is that when I reflect back on this experience, yes, it was challenging, but there's so much good that's come from it as well. And that's where I'm at with this experience, just trying to pull out those positives. Wow, that takes real strength. 